The film opens with a woman named Jennifer Reming, who was stranded on a remote island after the ship she was on was swept away by a powerful storm. When Jennifer finally regains consciousness, she realizes that she is not alone, because not far from there, Jennifer finds someone she knows, a man named Brad, who also happened to be stranded nearby. Unfortunately, Brad is not as lucky as Jennifer, as he has suffered severe injuries from a sharp coral that pierced his stomach, leaving him in a critical condition that threatens his life. Seeing this, Jennifer realizes that she must do something to save Brad. Therefore, she desperately tries to call for help, but sadly, no one responds to her cries. As the island turns out to be completely uninhabited, leaving Jennifer in a highly isolated and desperate situation with no help available to save Brad. With no other choice, Jennifer tries to treat Brad's wound by pulling out the coral from his stomach. Jennifer then enters the forest to search for drinking water until she finds a coconut and tries to crack it open. Once the water comes out, she immediately gives it to Brad to drink. However, Brad remains motionless and Jennifer realizes that he has already died. Confused and distressed, Jennifer takes a flare gun from Brad's life vest before walks along the beach, hoping to find someone on the other side. Unfortunately, she finds nothing and returns to where Brad's body is lying. After walking along the beach, Jennifer decides to enter the forest on the other side and accidentally discovers items left behind by a family that was previously stranded on the island. Inside a bag, Jennifer finds a bottle of pills that expired in 1994, indicating that this family was stranded on the island around that time. Jennifer also finds a soda can and a small box containing matches and other small items like a cotton swab. At that moment, Jennifer suddenly hears a tapping sound that resembles a hollow knee. Curious, she follows the sound and discovers that it is coming from inside a hollow coconut tree. When she looks closer, she finds a small bird inside the tree, pecking at the wood as it searches for insects. That night, heavy rain falls, keeping Jennifer awake as she tries to protect the items she obtained from the previously stranded family. The next morning, after the rain stops, Jennifer is shocked to find several fish suddenly dead on the beach. She also discovers a dead shark that appears to have been attacked by a wild animal. Despite this strange occurrence, Jennifer decides to take a few fish to eat, but she struggles to clean them. Jennifer then wanders into the middle of the island, where she accidentally finds some graves of people who were previously stranded there. Realizing that the last person stranded on the island showed respect for the dead, Jennifer returns to Brad's body and buries it properly on the beach. As night falls, Jennifer decides to use one of the matches she found to make a campfire, hoping that the fire will not only provide warmth, but also be used to cook some of the fish she found on the beach. After grilling the fish, Jennifer eats it to gain energy, hoping it will help her survive on this strange and remote island. The next day, while Jennifer is searching for wood to keep the campfire going, she is suddenly shocked by a horrifying sight, as Brad's grave, which he had carefully dug and covered, is now open and his body has disappeared as if it had been taken by a wild animal. Realizing that she might not be the only living being on this island, and that there could be a lurking threat, Jennifer immediately prepares herself for the worst. She crafts a simple spear from a sturdy tree branch to use as a self-defense tool, ready to protect herself from any dangers that may threaten her life on the island. The next day, Jennifer sees her suitcase, along with some other items, floating off the coast, drifting on the waves. Despite feeling hesitant because of the potentially dangerous sea conditions, she decides to swim toward it, using all her strength to fight the strong current and retrieve her suitcase, which might contain essential items for her survival on the island. After managing to reach the suitcase and grab it, Jennifer's attention is suddenly drawn to something strange at the bottom of the sea, which is a giant hole, deep and dark, that looks vast and ominous. She feels a bad sense about it, convinced that the hole is not something ordinary, but rather a deadly chasm that could swallow anything that comes near it. With growing caution, Jennifer quickly opens her suitcase and hastily puts on the long-sleeved shirt and pants she finds inside, ensuring that when night falls, she won't be too cold amidst the unpredictable weather on the island. When night arrives, Jennifer hears the sound of a plane flying overhead, therefore she quickly rushes to fire her flare. Unfortunately, she is too late as the plane has already flown too far away. When the flare descends into the ocean, Jennifer is startled to see a large creature emerging from the sea and walking toward the shore. Frightened, 
Jennifer immediately runs into the forest and hides behind some bushes. Luckily, the monster doesn't find her and only roams around, making terrifying sounds. After the creature leaves, Jennifer cautiously returns to the sea to wet herself, trying to calm down. The following day, Jennifer goes back to the tent she had set up as a temporary shelter and decides to look through the photos she found among the belongings of the family that was previously trapped on the island. As Jennifer carefully examines the photos, her eyes are drawn to one photo that seems to show something strange, a faint apparition that sends chills down her spine, as it is suspected to be the entity responsible for the family's death. Realizing that this island might be far more dangerous than she had imagined, Jennifer feels that she must leave this place as soon as possible before something terrible happens to her. Determined to save herself, Jennifer begins constructing a simple raft using a life vest and her suitcase, hoping the raft will carry her away from this cursed island. However, when Jennifer tries to swim away from the island using the raft she made, the suitcase, which is a crucial part of the raft, suddenly starts sinking, causing the raft to lose balance and become useless. As a result, Jennifer is forced to swim back to shore empty-handed, feeling frustrated but increasingly aware that escaping this island will not be as easy as she had hoped. As night falls, Jennifer chooses to rest inside the hollow coconut tree from before, so that when the monster appears, it won't be able to catch her. However, at midnight, the monster arrives and realizes that Jennifer is inside the trunk. The monster tries to topple the tree, but it seems to lack the strength, and eventually, the monster retreats back to the sea. The next day, Jennifer intentionally searches for small fish among the coral rocks. She then crushes the fish and throws them into the water. It turns out, Jennifer is trying to lure a shark to use as bait to attract the monster. After catching a shark, Jennifer hangs it from a tree and then hides in a nearby hole to observe what kind of creature was chasing her the previous day. Unfortunately, in the middle of the night, Jennifer falls asleep and misses seeing the sea monster that had already taken the shark. The next day, Jennifer is shocked to find a corpse, which turns out to be her friend Zack. However, his body is not intact and has several scratches on his face. Seeing this, Jennifer decides to use Zack's body to lure the monster instead of trying to catch a shark. When night falls, Jennifer stays awake, waiting until the monster finally appears and takes Zack's body. Shortly after, a plane flies over the island. At that moment, Jennifer considers firing a flare, but quickly changes her mind realizing that the monster is still near the beach. The next day, Jennifer constructs a hammock high in a coconut tree to prevent the monster from catching her. When night arrives, the creature reappears and manages to find her. Panicking, Jennifer runs toward the beach, but the monster continues to chase her, moving very quickly once it enters the water. As the monster leaps toward Jennifer, she immediately stabs the monster with a spear, successfully driving it back into the ocean. The following day, while Jennifer is sitting on the beach, she suddenly spots a lifeboat floating offshore. Seeing this, Jennifer quickly rushes to the lifeboat and discovers two people inside, who turn out to be her boyfriend, Lucas, and Brad's girlfriend, Mia. Knowing this, they land on the beach and embrace, grateful that some have survived, while Jennifer offers them grilled fish. Afterward, Jennifer informs Mia that Brad has passed away. Jennifer also urges them to escape the island with the raft as soon as possible because there is a very dangerous monster near the island. The monster has even eaten Brad's body, despite Jennifer burying it deep. Upon hearing this, Lucas and Mia are confused. They suspect that Jennifer might be hallucinating after being alone on the island for several days. Later in the day, Jennifer borrows Lucas's pocket knife to catch fish. However, she notices something strange as the pocket knife has blood stains on it. After catching fish, Mia and Lucas tell Jennifer that they refused to leave the island because they nearly died being tossed around in the ocean and now are being asked to return to the sea. However, Jennifer keeps reminding them about the sea monster, but they don't believe her and choose to stay on the island. Meanwhile, Jennifer, who does not want to spend another night on the island, pretends to bathe by the sea. While Lucas and Mia are distracted, Jennifer secretly takes some fish and then drags the lifeboat into the sea to escape. Unfortunately, Jennifer is caught and ends up being apprehended by Lucas. When Jennifer struggles, Mia hits her until she passes out. When Jennifer regains consciousness, she finds herself tied to a tree. At this point, Mia tells Jennifer that she is not to be trusted and that Mia also does not believe in the creature Jennifer has been talking about. 
After that, Lucas tries to talk to Jennifer alone and reveals that she is nothing but bad luck. He blames her for the storm that struck their ship when Jennifer joined Lucas and his friends on their voyage. In the middle of their conversation, they suddenly hear Mia scream, as the sea monster has attacked her. Lucas immediately runs toward Mia and strikes the monster, forcing it to retreat into the ocean. However, before Lucas can save Mia, the monster drags her away. Witnessing this, Lucas begins to believe Jennifer's warnings and quickly flees into the forest with her. The next morning, Lucas finally agrees to leave the island, therefore they light a fire using their last match and cook all the remaining fish. After that, they pack all their supplies into the raft and begin paddling out to sea. While on the raft, Jennifer notices a considerable amount of blood stains. This makes Jennifer suspect that Lucas and Mia may have killed Zack, since his body had scratches on his face. However, Jennifer decides not to dwell on it, focusing instead on escaping the island. At the same time, the sea monster suddenly reappears and tries to attack them from beneath the raft. During the attack, the monster manages to drag Jennifer to the ocean floor. Fortunately, Jennifer has Lucas's pocket knife, allowing her to stab the monster and swim back to the surface. Unfortunately, Lucas also falls into the sea, becoming an easy target for the monster. With the raft destroyed, Jennifer returns to the island and saves the remaining fire to keep it from going out. Realizing there's no other way to survive, Jennifer decides to confront the monster. She then digs up the graves of the stranded family and breaks some bones, intending to use them as weapons. She also sets up a series of traps involving dry leaves that she plans to ignite later. As night falls, the monster reappears, and Jennifer lures it into the traps she has carefully prepared. She then encircles the creature with fire and bravely stabs it multiple times. Despite taking many blows, Jennifer keeps getting up and running toward the beach, determined to survive. Just as the monster is about to attack Jennifer again, it suddenly collapses from blood loss. Seizing the opportunity, Jennifer boldly finishes off the monster by decapitating it, proving that she has successfully killed it. Now, with a sense of relief, Jennifer waits for a rescue team that might arrive upon seeing the fire on the island. And so, the film ends. Moral lesson from the story, if you're stuck on a deserted island with a monster, always make sure to double-check that your raft won't sink, because nothing ruins an escape plan like a leaky suitcase. And remember, if your travel buddy says there's a sea monster, maybe just believe them before it's too late.